What's going on guys? Jordan here, your coach of the Seattle Seekings for season one of the P4G. That's right, we are in week six doing our team builder vid as we go to take on uh, Rapid Coach of the Jacksonville Jolteons, I think is what it is. Yeah, so um, not gonna lie, his team's got some problems, but I think we'll be able to handle it pretty well. Um, so why might as well jump right into it. Oh, before I do that, it doesn't really impact this battle, but as of last week, I did make an exchange. I dropped Spear Tome in favor of Gligar. So we have Gligar on our team now. I didn't really feel like it was going to help me much this week, but in the future, it very well might come in handy. So just keep that in the back of your mind. If you see Gligar on the, out, out on here, it's on. Don't worry. It's on the team. It's on the team. Um, so anyway, I'm going to start by going over the back five of the Jilteons and kind of go from there. So um, I got to explain ahead of time why I don't think Gyarados, Hitmonlee, and Registeel would come. It's really, I think they can, but it's a 50-50 between two different builds that I think he might go for. Um, so Gyarados basically it depends on if he wants to go more bulky or wants to go more offensive. He might go Gyarados, he might go Alo Mamola, which I predicted him this week to have Alo, Alo Mamola as his uh, pick. So it's that's the only reason I don't see him bringing, I just don't see him bringing the dual water types. I don't see him doing a rain team on the, on with this setup. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but it is definitely possible. I, I really don't see this happening. Um, then of course there's Kecleon. I don't really, I've never really seen a Kecleon put in a whole lot of work in the way it should. Uh, most people I've seen who pick up Kecleon tend to regret it about halfway through the season, maybe they'll maybe full way through the season. So we'll see if uh, I don't I don't see it coming, but I, I mean maybe just for knockoff pressure. I don't know. It, it, there's there's possibilities. Um, but anyway, moving on down, Hitmonlee. He's got Infernape as well as Hitmonlee, so very similar situation. He might bring it if he sp suspects I'm going to hazard stack him, which I I'm not necessarily going to hack his hazard stack him, but we do have rocks, so that's a thing. Um, and then of course we've got Marowak. I just, it doesn't do enough for him. He's got other physical attackers that do more. Um, and then Registeel, he might bring it for the Clef. Oh, you can't really see it. Here, let me just drag it up. No, no, we're gonna do, how do I get it on there? Oh no, oh no, no. Well, take my word for it. There's a Registeel down there. You can kind of see it. It's just the layout's not being very nice. Can I like, can I do this? Can I go, can I like make it smaller? And then come, there we go, okay. So now we have, now we have Registeel down there just chilling like a villain. Uh, so yeah, kind of a problem if we get, uh, if we get Clef out or if we're taking on Clef early on, but I'd like to just T-Wave it if it shows up and then just take advantage of it from there. This is gonna be a very T-Wave intensive game for us. A lot of T-Waving and a lot of Toxicking. So hopefully I can get uh, some chip damage and a lot of para hacks going my way really early on. So the team that I think he is bringing is gonna be Latios. Um, pretty much Latios makes an excellent defogger and I definitely have to worry about it. I don't think if I have, if I have Clef as my stealth rocker, I don't think he's very inclined to come into Latios to try and defog it away right away. Um, so we'll be able to take advantage of that. And if he does, I can just try and go, try and go for a moon blast on it. Um, if I'm lucky, I am bringing red card this week on Clef. So that is a thing. If Latios gets switched into that kind of situation, maybe he thinks to say, screw it and go for a defog. And then I can hit him up with a nice moon blast or something and then get my rocks back up or something like that. We'll figure it out. Um, moving on, we've got Jolteon, Thunderbolt, Signal Beam, I hit HP, Ice, and Volt Switch. I really don't want to be hitting that T-Wave button until I know that Jolteon's out of the way because of that Volt Absorb. And of course, Volt Absorb coupled with Choice Specs equals a lot, a lot of pain. So let's try to not have that happen. Um, basically, it could be Choice Specs, Life Orb, or um, in some cases, I've seen Expert Belt, but I don't really see it happening here. And then, of course, there's good old-fashioned Choice Scarf as well. If you really want the Jolteon to outspeed, I don't see it in this case. Jolteon pretty much outspeeds my whole team as is. So I don't see it necessarily going for Choice Scarf unless it's afraid I'm going to scarf something. And then we're then we're just talking an arms race here. So Amoongus is the next big thing on my opponent's team. Spore and Clear Smog is a potential, but uh, Giga Drain's a problem. Sludge Bomb's a problem. HP Fire's a problem. And I needed a sure answer for this. So I'll explain, I'll explain how Rotom Heat is going to completely destroy this thing in a mere minute. Um, but moving on, basically I just, I need to have, I need to have this thing just completely off its, off tilt and just off, off its rocker right off the bat. So that'd be great. Um, next we have Infernape. Infernape could potentially be a suicide lead if he wants to double up on, if he wants to go for the, if he wants to get his rocks up while I'm getting my rocks up. I really don't want to take that chance. If I see it come in, I may panic and go out into Rotom just because of a potential gunk shot would do a lot of damage if that is a thing. I don't necessarily know he's bringing it necessarily. We'll find out, I suppose. He might opt to just taunt right off the bat. I don't know. There's a couple things that Infernape can do. Um, kind of ironic that, you know, despite it being my own mascot, I have very little experience playing against Infernape. So I usually have one, I usually have one on my team. Uh, actually, I haven't, even, I haven't even used it on my team. I love Infernape, but I just haven't found a spot to plug it in recently. 
So that's a thing. There's Infernape. Uh, Sableye, it's pretty obvious what it's going to do. It's going to try and uh, mess you up with Will-O-Wisp or T-Wave right off the bat as soon as it gets onto the field with that Prankster ability. So that's another thing where Rotom Heat comes in handy, and I'll explain a little bit about my strategy going into the match in just a moment. Last, of course, we have Alom Alomomola, which basically is Toxic Stall dot Pokemon that we have to deal with. So Wish protects Scald Toxic. It's just going to get in my way. I'm going to have to go into something and just beat it until it dies. So that's the plan there. Um, now, moving on to my team. My team has a little bit of an interesting strategy for it right off the bat. So um, I know we, I know these aren't necessarily in order, but I'm going to kind of talk about... I'm going to talk about Clefable first. I'm actually going to move Clefable up here and talk about her first. So we are running... The set that we ran against um, Old School Sin, not the set we ran against Pokemon, because this set has Stealth Rocks over Calm Mind, and I'm not going to risk losing to another Calm Mind setup crit again, because that's the, that would be the third time, and that's not okay. Um, so Stealth Rock, T-Wave, Moonblast, and Softball, rocking the red card right off the bat, and the reason we're rocking that red card is because if anything comes in and tries to, that can come in and two-hit KO Clefable, uh, I want it gone, I want it out of here immediately. Um, ideally, ideally into whatever the spinner is or whatever the defogger is, because if it goes into that, then we can try and T-wave it and take advantage. Um, so basically, red card does a lot towards guaranteeing that I'm able to get rocks up in the first place. So, um, as long as he doesn't go into, say, Mega Sableye right off the bat, or if that is the case, like if it's something I do need to worry about, I can go into, like say for example, he goes into Amoongus right off the bat. I can go into Rotom Mixtape. Now Rotom Mixtape here, my Rotom Heat is going to be rocking Safety Goggles. I was originally thinking Lumberry, and then I was like, wait, Safety Goggles does stop Spore. I don't have to worry about Thunder Wave. I don't have to worry about Will-O-Wisp. So that's half the half of the Mega Sableye problems and half the problems of Amoongus gone out of the way. So we're gonna lead with Clef, almost nine, to, almost guaranteed, depending on his build, but almost guaranteed. Uh, then switch into Rotom Heat when the going gets tough to hopefully take a Spore like it's nothing. Fire back with an Overheat, maybe hit up a Toxic, maybe get my Light Screen going because I have a lot of type coverage for all of the physical attackers, but not necessarily as much for the special hitters. So it will be nice to get a Light Screen up. Rotom is gonna do an excellent job uh, being my special wall for this fight. Well, one of one of several specially bulky mons. So hopefully we won't have to worry about anything and we can take control of the match as long as Rotom's on the field. So for Alligator, we're running very similar builds to what we usually run, except instead of Substitute, we're going Ice Punch. I know as much as I love using the sub to, to fool my opponent, I think that Rapid might see that coming. And also I need Ice Punch more for the coverage as well, uh, as well as Superpower and Waterfall. I need the three attacks. It just, it's, there's a lot of this match is gonna come down to just having the right coverage at the right moment. So I need to make sure that I, if I can take one hit, I can fire back and kill something. That's gonna be the goal with Ferrari. That's gonna be the goal with Satan. That's gonna be a couple of goals here. Um, so speaking of Satan, I'm looking at Satan right now and I'm debating in my mind right now, because I've been debating for the last two hours, well, last hour, give or take, maybe a little more, um, whether or not I wanted to go three attacks and aromatherapy or three attacks, aromatherapy and life orb or three or two attacks, aroma synthesis or aroma tailwind or tailwind synthesis. There's a lot of combinations we can run with Shaman that would really help. I honestly almost want to click point, uh, pull the trigger on um, on getting a Tailwind up, but I think Aroma is just a little bit more important because this team has such a status um, favorability, uh, preference. That's the word I'm looking for. It, it, he's, he's got a lot of things that can status affect me, so I want to be able to Aromatherapy should something happen. Uh, like, say, for example, Rotom Mixtape gets poison. That's the only thing that he can't uh, repel is poison, so I want to be able to go into Shaman uh, eventually and Aroma that away. So that's the thing there. Seed Flare, of course, is just going to do the amount of damage it always does, which is just a lot. You know what? I act, hmm. See, I, I, I'm I going Specs, because if I read an Earth Power on Jolteon, I almost guarantee a kill. Like, it's it's like a 75% it's like chance without Rocks. But I'm thinking, since I'm going Rocks, I think since I'm going Rocks, I will go Life Orb on Shaman. And I think that should be fine. And then we can Aroma and attack. I mean, not have to worry about switching out. This is a game day. This is like a, a right up to the moment decision right here of doing that. So keep that in mind. Moving on down, we've got Goggles the Flygon. Uh, is going to be one of our pivots back and forth with Rotom if need be. So we got U-Turn, Defog, Outrage, and Earthquake. I don't normally like running Defog, especially not if I'm setting up my own rocks. But I think it's important to have uh, in case, for instance, you know, Rotom goes down without getting, or, uh, or Clef goes down without getting those rocks up in the first place, then I want them gone completely. Plus, I don't have to worry about if Mega Sableye comes in and I just defog, sure, my evasiveness goes down, but there's still no more rocks on either side of the field. So it's, it washes.
flashes out, which is perfectly fine. I'm going to run Choice Scarf, which is always risky, of course, just because of uh, switch outs and, and that sort of thing. But if I can just U-turn around him all day, that's great. If I, there's no gosh darn Shuka Berry, that'll be fantastic. And then, of course, Outrage, is, you're locked into it anyway, so you might as well at least go super fast, right? So that is that. That's goggles right there. And last, of course, we've got Iron Man. I'm going to be running Swords Dance, U-Turn, Roost, and Aerial Ace. Why Aerial Ace? You're probably wondering. Well, first of all, it's Technician. Second of all, it just does so much work to major problems on this team, which I'll go over more in a minute here. So definitely going to be needing that Aerial Ace. Um, I w I'm going with it over Bullet Punch, so I need to be very careful that I'm only using it on a switch or on a situation where, because Bullet Punch isn't going to do much damage to like Infernape anyway, so it's not something I want to try. Um, but I think U-Turn is going to be important and I think Aerial Ace is going to be important. And even if I can't get the matchup I want, I can at least U-Turn out as the middle ground play while attempting, you know, while I think they're going to go in with that. So we're going mixed attack and special bulk because I want to live one HP fire that could be present on relatively anything. I know with Infernape there, there's a good chance he might not opt to go for that at all, but if he runs it as a, a Fire Blast set or a special set, then I definitely still have to worry about Fire Blast. I would like to live one hit. I don't know if I can even with Max Medef, but we'll see. I don't know. We're just going to kind of play it by... Um, I just, I feel personally that since we're going Swords Dance, we can afford to give up just a little bit of an attack for some bulk uh, back there as well. So that's my team. Let's go take a look at the Sweeper Calc real fast. And as you can see by, you know what, hold on. I actually need to really quickly import again because I switched a move or two there just now. So let's go get my team in there. All right, so as you can see, there isn't a whole lot that does a lot of damage to Rotom as long as I don't have that Infernape up, which hopefully I can Toxic predicting it to come in. So that's a thing. But also I have to worry about, um, also I have to worry about, say for example, the Latios. I do not want to be left in alone on the Latios unless I already have Light Screen up, in which case I can go for a Toxic on that. Um, I do have to be careful that Mega Sableye. Mega Sableye is the only thing that can put Toxic back up on me in this case, other than, of course, uh, Amoongus, but I think he's, it's not gonna happen. He's gonna have a He's gonna be going for Spore if I'm if it's on the field. But luckily, we just do a lot of damage. We're able to do about just under 50% to a Lomomola, which you guys can't really see. But there we go. We can do just under 50% damage to him. We can also solo kill it with Seed Flare. So just getting it on the field means it's probably gonna die, which is always wonderful. Um, and then, of course, Shaman does work on this whole team, even with, I mean, Earth Power is a little weak, but that's okay. We've got Overheat for that, so we'll be fine in that regard, um, along with Aerial Ace. There isn't anything here that really walls us completely. There are some things that are a little bit of a nuisance, but then they also get completely countered by other things, such as Latios gets one shot by two moves that I have. Jolteon gets one shot by two, or sorry, did I say two? I meant three, um, for Latios. Amoongus gets two shot by a lot of things. Infernape gets one shot by a lot of things, assuming it doesn't have Scarf which I'm assuming it's a suicide lead here, so we'll see. Um, and then, of course, Mega Sable Eye. We've got Moonblast for it. We've got Dazzling Gleam for it. We've got... Oh, actually, Seed Flare technically does more, so there's almost no reason for me to bring Dazzling Gleam other than the Mischance, which, honestly... Uh, well, I mean, if I get a... Da mm -hmm. Oh, that's... Pardon me for that strange noise. Oh, I know why I went Dazzling Gleam, but... I'm not gonna go Dazzling Gleam. I'm gonna switch. Oh wait, no, I went it for, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I went it for Latios, that's right, that's right, that's right. Um, Because I needed the 60 to 70 on Latios if it switches in like that. So that'll be great. Hopefully we can get rocks up on this team right away and start going to work. Nothing here is completely safe. The only thing I have to worry about is completely overpowering the Amoongus or at least walling it myself. So that'll be that. Um, hopefully we can pick up a win this week and go, what are we three and two right now? So that would be four and two. Um, I wanna get back on kind of a winning uh, track overall. I know we lost two of the last four, which is a bummer, but at this time last year, we were relatively the same record in the NPA as well. So, I mean, what, or the, last year, la this time, like a couple months ago in the NPA, we were at this exact point, three and two. So hopefully from here, we just are able to win on out. I know we have a bye next week, so there will be no videos related to the P4G, but I will be at PAX, so uh, maybe I'll get some vlogs or something like that up for you guys. Uh, but anyway, that'll about cover it. Hope to see you guys at the actual battle. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below if you're supporting the Seattle Seekings, and I will see you all there. Bye-bye!